Okay, wonderful. Welcome to the Vantage Seminar. And we're so happy to have um, Francesca Balistreri speaking today on the arithmetic of zero cycles of K3 surfaces and Coomer varieties. And this is our fourth talk on the series of five talks about K3 surfaces. Uh, so Francesca, is it all right for us to video your talk today? Yeah, sure. Yeah, great, well, go ahead. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, okay, so today I'm going to talk about the arithmetic of zero cycles. So that's the first uh, uh, the interesting bit that I'm going to talk about on products of K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties. Now, Kummer varieties, strictly speaking, are not in general K3 surfaces, so I'm a bit cheating here. But they're closely, closely related to Kummer surfaces, which are K3 surfaces, and they're the natural generalization of Kummer surfaces. So they're kind of related objects in some, in some sense. And I'm going to talk also about products of these um, objects together. Okay, so um, first of all, let's define what our objects of interest are in this talk. You will probably have seen um, the following definition before uh, in previous talks. I think Bianca gave uh, a similar, if not the same definition as this one. Um, so this is the definition of um, K3 surfaces. And essentially, as you can see, an algebraic K3 surface, X over a number field K. And by the way, in this talk, we're just going to look at number fields. We're not going to uh, look at any other kind of fields. So we're just uh, interested in this kind of field. Um, but anyway, an algebraic K3 surface, X over a number field K, uh, this is just a smooth uh, projective variety of dimension two over K such that the, um, well, such that it has a trivial canonical divisor. And the second condition that we want is this condition that tells us that um, essentially there is no irregularity and this is a regular variety. And of course we have seen, I mean, probably many examples by now of K3 surface. My favorite one, just because it's the simple, simplest one to write down is the, so-called Fermat uh, cortic surface. And it's this nice smooth cortic surface uh, in uh, P3. Uh, but of course, there are many other examples of K3 surfaces. Um, for example, more generally, um, any smooth cortic in P3 will be a K3 surface. Then uh, complete intersection of certain kinds will also be uh, K3 surfaces. And many more examples of well, there are many more examples. And um, I mean, as in all the talks, I needed to put the canonical K3 uh, photo or whatever picture, I guess. So I guess this is the, well, no, sorry, this is color. The, the mountain uh, is the K2 mountain. Uh, this guy here is Kodaira. Uh, the middle guy is Kaller. I can never remember if there are. God, I cannot spell. I hope it's spelled like this. And this uh, distinguished uh, sir here is uh, Kummer. And of course, uh, the name K3 is uh, was given in honor of these three uh, distinguished mathematicians. Plus. Uh, the K2 mountain. Um, anyway, I hope um, at least we see the faces of uh, these people. Anyway, so these are um, K3 surfaces. This is the definition. Um, in this talk, we're going to talk about K3 surfaces in general, but we're also going to focus on uh, some uh, special um, subset of K3 surfaces, which are called Kummer surfaces. And uh, 
you've probably seen uh, this construction already. Uh, if not, uh, I'll go over it again. But anyway, so uh, for Kummer surfaces, uh, we start with an abelian, oops, sorry. We start with some abelian variety A of, well, in the case of commerce surfaces, uh, we, we want this abelian variety to be of dimension two, to be a surface over K. And let me remind you that again, I'm always considering K to be a number field. So whenever, if I forget to, to, to say number field K, Whenever you see K, it's a number field. Okay, so A, of course, uh, comes with a natural involution, uh, which I call <coughs> Yota. And of course, this is just uh, sends X to minus X using the group structure on A. And uh, this is a classical construction. We can uh, define the Kummer variety or surface in the case when the dimension is two. Uh, by taking the quotient of A by this involution, yota. And then uh, we take, we essentially uh, desingularize this, uh, this quotient and take the minimal desingularization. And what we get if we do this, uh, this process is what we call a Kummer variety or again a Kummer surface, uh, surface. it depends on the dimension of dimension D. Okay, so this is a classical construction. And of course, when D is two, this is just a more surface. It might not be completely obvious immediately, but it turns out that this kind of um, construction here, um, when, the dimension, uh, when the dimension is two, uh, yields a K3 surface. So one can check that the conditions that I gave you before are satisfied. Okay. So um, this is good uh, because we want, of course, to talk about K3 surface. And, uh, but again, I, I'll also talk about this kind of generalization. So I allow myself to, to, to let the dimension not to be restricted at two, but also get any, any dimension. Now, the first point I want to make is that um, Kummer surfaces and Kummer varieties more generally, they clearly have a really uh, close relationship to uh, abelian varieties by construction. And this is something that we will exploit later on. So that's the first um, observation. The second observation is kind of a more trivial one. And uh, the observation is that uh, with this construction, uh, we always have, I mean, such a, such, a surf, uh, such a variety always has a K rational point. And some people might, might find this a good thing, but and it is a good thing, it's not a bad thing. Why should it be a bad thing? But for this, the kind of um, things that we want to talk about later on, if our varieties have a K rational point, uh, a K rational point, then, well, everything we're going to say is kind of trivial. So we want to, um, in a sense, uh, construct some varieties which are closely related to these ones, which don't necessarily have a, a a rational point, or at least not an immediate one. Okay. Uh, so this is what we want to do now. So we take this, uh, this classical construction and essentially we want to twist it a bit so that this condition here is not immediately satisfied at least. There is some chance that your variety is not uh, has no rational points, for example. So let's do this. Um, and as you will see, the construction is quite similar when we twist uh, this construction. Um, and uh, in blue, I've just highlighted the, 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 the extra steps that we, we need to do to, in order to twist uh, the previous construction. So again, uh, we start with an abelian uh, variety of some dimension d over k. 
but now we take um, we take some torsor t or the class of some torsor t um, over k under the two torsion part of the abelian variety. So this is what this is saying. We take this torsor, and this naturally induces a two covering uh, v over a. Okay. Now, again, we consider the involution on A as we did before, and it's, uh, it's not too difficult to show that this involution here actually um, induces an involution over V. Okay, so we have another involution there. And then essentially we, oh God, I hope you can, something happened. I don't know if you can still see. Okay, oops. I don't know what happened. Uh, my my screen went completely black for one oh, we second. But see most most of it, but there's a little black box on the bottom that is blocking the bottom line or two. Oh, this is I think from uh, Zoom because I couldn't. The problem is I cannot share. Zoom doesn't uh, recognize the window I want to share, so I need to share my full screen. And I think since I'm the host, uh, I don't know how to deactivate this thing. Can I? Maybe I can put it somewhere else. Um, well, uh, I don't know where to put this uh, thing. Um, oh, uh, that, that's worse. Oh, Maybe you can yeah. stop yeah, yeah. sharing okay. and start sharing again. Oh, there. Stop sharing. That, that, that looks good. That I think, yeah, I've got rid of it. I, I, I don't know now how to go back to it, but for now it's uh, you know it's uh yeah. looks anyway. good okay. okay good good <laughs> sorry about that uh again i need to share my full screen um where was i um yeah um so this involution on a actually induces an involution on b and again, we can do this uh, similar um, construction as before. We take V, we quotient it by this involution, and then we take the minimal desingularization of this quotient. And what we get uh, is what is called a twisted Hummer variety of dimension V associated to this two covering, or equivalently associated to this uh, kind of torso here. Okay. And this is actually the, the, the kind of objects uh, that I want to talk about whenever I talk about uh, Kummer variety or Kummer surfaces. Uh, secretly, I really mean twisted Kummer varieties and Kummer surfaces. Because now it turns out that when you twist things, it's not so clear whether this object here has a rational point or not. And so what I'm going to say next uh, will not be completely trivial and easy. OK. so. Let's move on. These two were the main objects of study uh, that we will be interested in in this talk. And of course, we will also consider their products at some point. But these are the base objects. Now, now that we have the objects, what should we do with them? So a classical goal in general in, in arithmetic geometry um, is that of understanding the arithmetic, for example, of rational points on your objects. This is a very classical aim. So let me quickly rev uh, revise, review, uh, recall, I guess. Sorry, cannot speak English sometimes. Anyway, so the, the one of the main questions that uh, we're interested in is this very basic and innocent looking question, uh, which is uh, um, when is the set of K rational point of my variety X empty. And despite the looks of these questions, this is an extremely hard question. It's, it's very hard to, to answer directly. So that's why that uh, in general, we wish for something like the ASSE principle, which is this thing which is defined here to, to hold. So what is the ASSE principle, first of all? Um, here we let x be any smooth projective geometrically integral variety over a number field k. Uh, I mean, I'm throwing in a lot of adjectives to, just to make life easier, but actually you can get rid of 
some of their objectives as well. And we say that X uh, satisfies the Hasse principle if um, uh, the set of k-rational point is empty. Uh, uh, if uh, okay, let me phrase it again. Uh, whenever it's true that uh, the, the emptiness of the set of k-rational point is equivalent to the emptiness of the set of adelic, adelic points on X. Of course, one implication is trivial. This one uh, is the trivial implication. You always have this uh, implication. So the other implication is the interesting one. And when that other implication holds, um, then we say that the variety satisfies the Hasse principle. Uh, in other words, what this is saying is that whenever the Hasse principle holds, you can, uh, you can replace, uh, in order to answer this very hard question here, um, you can replace this object here, the set of rational point, which is uh, an object with global properties. And so it's quite hard to deal with, with this object here, the set of adelic points. And adelic points have a local nature that makes it, uh, that makes uh, working with them so much easier, so much more practical. We have effective algorithms to, to compute uh, this set. Life is so much better when we can uh, work with adelic points. And so when the Hasse principle holds, uh, this is pretty good because essentially we can pretty much always answer this question somehow using adelic points using these local objects, object. Of course, there are many examples of um, varieties, of families of varieties satisfying the Asse principle. Here, I'm just giving you the, you know, the, the basic ones of so smooth quadrics uh, over a number field satisfy the Asse principle. Uh, but of course, I mean, there are many examples of varieties satisfying the Asse principle, but there are also many examples of varieties and in particular of K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties failing the Asse principle. Okay. And the problem tends to be in general that this set here of, um, of uh, adelic points is a bit too big. It's a bit too coarse to capture uh, in many scenarios, the emptiness of the set of adelic points. That's the main difficulty. This set of adelic points is too big. So an idea is to refine it. And this is what uh, is classically done. So we usually use the Brouwer group. Uh, I mean, there are many ways to refine this, uh, the set of adelic points. One such way is to use the Brouwer group. And um, I think Bianca mentioned it uh, a bit. Um, during the last talk. So the Brouwer group of X is just the second uh, et al cohomology uh, with coefficients in GM, the, the, um, uh, the multiplicative group. Uh, the nice thing about the Brouwer group of X is that it's actually, um, this is actually a contravariant functor from the category of schemes to the category of abelian groups. Um, or more generally to cut the category of sets, if you want to use the forgetful functor. Um, and using this uh, functoriality of the Brouwer group of X, uh, we can actually cut out a subset of, well, it's not always a subset, sometimes it's the same thing as the full set of adelic points, but sometimes it is a genuine subset of adelic points. Um, still containing the set of uh, rational points. And this is the, how the construction goes. So, um, I mean, I'll quickly go through it. So usually you just fix one element in the broad group of X. Uh, and um, if uh, we can define some evaluation maps of uh, this element, we can evaluate this element of the broad group of X uh, to certain points. Uh, for example, if we have um, a k-rational point, then uh, this will be the same as a map from spec k to x. Um, and essentially, the evaluation map is defined by just um, applying the Brouwer functor to this uh, morphism. Of course, this is a contravariant functor, so 
if you apply Brouwer X, the Brouwer functor to this morphism, you will get uh, a morphism like this, which goes from Brouwer X to Brouwer of spec of K, which is sometimes just, um, this is a shorthand, it should really say, say spec of K. And of course, we were starting with some element alpha here. And the evaluation of alpha at this point x will just be the image of alpha under this map here. So whatever is, is here, this is the evaluation. It's defined to be the evaluation of alpha at x, the image of alpha under, or under this map. And of course, I mean, this is just for rational points, but you can do the same, uh, uh, the same ideas you can use for uh, uh, viadic points and so on and so forth. So using this, um, oh no, the, the thing came back. Um, okay, okay. Um, using these evaluation maps um, and uh, some results from class field theory, uh, we get this very useful commutative diagram. So the vertical, the orange maps here are the, um, the evaluation maps and the, the bit coming from uh, class field theory is this sequence here, which is one of the fundamental sequences of class field theory. And the nice thing is that this diagram commutes and we're essentially interested in this uh, red map here which goes from adelic points to uh, this Q mod Z. And uh, using the commutativity of this diagram, we can define the, um, the brouwer man set um, using that red map there. So the brouwer man set, which is this one, it's called the brouwer man set. It's just defined to be uh, the set of adelic points which map to zero under that red arrow that I've shown you before. And of course you want to do this for all um, elements in the bar group of X. By definition, of course, this is contained in the set of adelic points and using the commutativity of that diagram, um, and the acceptance of the bottom sequence, uh, you can also show that the set of rational points is actually contained in this um, in this uh, in this set in the Brouwer Manning set. And so we can use this set as a refinement of the as the principle, of course, and uh, we get what is uh, well, what I will be I denote by HP for as the principle with Brouwer Manning abstraction BR. The definition is exactly the same as before, um, only that instead of having, before we just had the, the, the set of adelic points here, and now we use this uh, refinement. We use the brouwer manning set. So we said that uh, X satisfies the ASCII principle with brouwer manning obstruction. If um, the set of uh, adelic po uh, of uh, rational points of X is empty, whenever the set of um, the Brouwer Manning set is empty. Okay. So this is just a refinement. Now, um, the main question once we have this refinement is, okay, is this refinement good enough for K3 surfaces? I mean, uh, uh, with respect at least to the original basic question that I showed you, I mean, is the set of rational point empty? Is this set enough? Is this Brouwer Manning set enough? Uh, the answer to this question is that we don't know. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, but there is one conjecture by Skorobogatov. And uh, according to this conjecture, the answer to this question should be yes, of course, conjecturally. Okay. So this is the, the content of this conjecture. Um, and again, this is for K3 surfaces. And again, I mean, as before, when whenever we had the, the, the ASCII principle um, held 
yeah, held. Um, that meant that uh, with respect to the main question, I, I asked the basic question, um, well, that meant that the set of adelic points was a perfect approximation of the set uh, of irrational point. Here, a similar thing can be said. So whenever this uh, as the principle with Brouwer Manning obstruction holds, uh, we have that the, set, the Brouwer Manning set is a perfect approximation of the set of irrational points with respect to the question whether this set is empty or not. Okay, so this is uh, the idea for uh, the, 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 the picture for K3 surfaces. Um, essentially, conjecturally, we believe that uh, the Brouwer Manning obstruction should be the only one should be enough uh, for the ASSA principle. I mean, this should always uh, be true. And there are some, uh, there is some evidence towards this conjecture. I mean, the evidence uh, is admittedly not very much at the moment, but it's slowly building. So um, at least we, we haven't found any counterexamples yet. So let me just, this is just some evidence. So there is some work, work by Arpas and Skorobogatov, both um, Arpas has both papers, uh, solo papers and in work with uh, Skorobogatov. Um, but in their, for example, in their joint work, they show that um, the, the, the previous conjecture holds for some specific Kummer surfaces um so essentially oops sorry yeah for example when uh, uh, the underlying abelian variety um a uh, is the product of two elliptic curves or it's the jacobian of a genus uh, two curve with a rational barrier stress point and and if I remember correctly, maybe there are also some other technical conditions, but this is the general type of surfaces they can deal with. And um, also there are some examples for some elliptic uh, fibrations, and there are results due to Kolyotelena, Swinton Dyer, and Skorbogatov in this direction. But this is pretty much all we have at the moment. Okay. So picture for K3 surfaces, we have this conjecture, we have some evidence for this conjecture. Not much evidence, but some evidence. Okay. Let us now move on to something more general because if you remember the title of this talk um, is not- Jessica, about... Before you yeah. move on, uh, there's a, a question in the chat uh, that you might be interested in from uh, Niels Brun. Niels, do you wanna ask your question or? or I can try to read it. Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, sure, yeah, I can do so. As I am unfortunately not in position to put my camera on at the moment, but um, uh, yeah, so uh, when when you say that there, there's no evidence to the counter, could, could we actually ever, uh, are, have we, do we have a situation where we might be able to prove that? So would we have a situation for a Kumar variety somewhere where we would be able to prove that there are no rational points, even though the Brouwer set is, is non-empty. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the, the scent up, as I mean, the scent obstructions would be the obvious ones to look at, but they, they those might be problematic for Kummer varieties. Yeah, I don't know, to be honest. Um, Honestly, I believe, I personally, I mean, this is my personal belief. I believe that Kummer varieties also should um, follow um, a similar thing uh, in the sense that I believe that the Brown Manning obstruction should be the same also for Kummer varieties. Um, and this is just based on the fact that, as I said before, Kummer varieties are very closely related to abelian varieties, and for abelian varieties, modulo some, uh, you know, finiteness of sha and stuff like this. Um, that's true. That's the, the actually you can uh, you can say something more, um, but let's say in general the Brouwer Manning obstruction is the only one to the ASCII principle. So maybe maybe that's uh, I. But anyway, to answer your question, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 
Thanks. But I believe, you know, for cumin varieties, it should also be impossible to find counterexamples, let's put it this way. Um, anyway, so we now have, uh, I mean, we have talked about uh, these rational points, which was more or less the classical um, perspective. But there is also um, another type of objects uh, uh, which are called zero cycles, which are kind of a generalization of uh, rational points, in a sense. And uh, it also makes sense to, to ask oneself, OK, can we understand the arithmetic of zero cycles instead of just the arithmetic of rational points? I'm not saying that this is necessarily more difficult uh, just because it's more general, because as you will see, the zero cycles, uh, yes, there are generalization of rational points, but they have also other nice properties that rational points don't have. So I don't know which one is more difficult. Maybe they're equally difficult. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, let's start with the, the natural question. Um, what are zero cycles? What is a zero cycle? As I said, zero cycles are generalizations of rational points. And here I'm using the word abelianization, linearization of rational points. Um, this, I mean, the choice of this word will be clear at the very end when I talk a, a bit about the Chow group. But I mean, morally, this is also true for the set of um, zero cycles. Um, so what is a zero cycle uh, of degree D? So we need to fix some degree. Uh, again, X will be a, a nice enough variety over a number field uh, K. We fix a degree D. And a zero cycle, uh, let's call it Z of degree D over X, is just a formal sum of close point on X. Uh, so since this is a formal sum, we know that, uh, well, it's a formal sum, o sum over uh, the integers. So we know that each of these uh, nx are integers. And we know that for all but finitely many um, close points x, little x in x, uh, these, uh, these, these values, these numbers, uh, nx will be zero, OK? This is a formal sum. Um, sorry, I'm just getting rid of this uh, box. Um, OK, so I mean, this is the definition of a zero cycle, but it still doesn't uh, contain the information about the degree. So we want this formal sum here to, to also uh, satisfy this constraint. So the degree, we want the degree of this uh, z uh, and the degree is defined by this expression. So we just take um, the same number nx. And now we multiply it not by x, but by, by, by the, this, uh, the degree of this extension, where k of x is the residue field of x. So the residue field of x, in a sense, is the most natural field in which x is defined. I mean, it's a vague definition, but it's a good way to think about this, I think. And since the points are closed, uh, of course, this uh, degree here is finite. And uh, we want this, this sum here to be equal to d. We want the degree of this to be equal to d. So this is uh, the definition of a zero cycle of degree d. Now, a rational point, uh, for example, is, uh, is, a zero is an effective zero cycle of, uh, and by effective, I mean that uh, all the ends are positive or non-zero. Well, or zero, of course. But um, a rational point is an effective zero cycle of degree one. You can check this. And that's why zero cycles are generalizations of rational points uh, in that sense. And of course, now with zero cycles, it makes sense to kind of add them together to add points together while and that's why I say there there are kind of abelianization of rational points anyway so this is the definition of zero cycles um, 
they look complicated, but they're kind of nice objects. So, um, now we can start to ask uh, to construct objects which are analogous to uh, the ones that we have constructed in the case for rational points. Uh, so let's say if this is the rational point uh, kind of realm or world, this is the zero cycle uh, of the, the world. That, well, okay, so uh, when we were talking about rational points, we were interested in uh, the set of k rational points here. And uh, we can construct uh, something similar in uh, the in the world of zero cycles. We just take uh, this set here to be the set of zero cycles of degree D on X. Um, similarly, uh, oops, sorry. Um, well, we were looking at adelic points. And since I was always uh, assuming that, that our X is proper, since it's projective, uh, we also have this equality here. So we know that adelic points are just the product uh, over all places of um, the uh, viadic points. And so we do something similar for uh, zero cycles. So we define the set of adelic points, uh, adelic zero cycles of degree D on X to be this product here. It's very analogous. You can see the analogy, hopefully. Then the next object that we considered in the world of rational points was this uh, Brauer-Mannin set. And it turns out that we can also construct the Brauer-Mannin set for zero cycles of degree D using pretty much the same ideas as before, but there are some complications because zero cycles, uh, you can think of them as, you know, there are a bunch of uh, a bunch of points coming from different fields, living in different fields, uh, stuck together, well, put together in a sum, in a weighted sum. So you need to take into account these complications, but uh, it's, it's, it's not too bad. You can do it. And as before, we define the as a principle for rational points, like here. And we can do the same for zero cycles completely analogous. And uh, again, before we define this uh, as the principle with brauer manning abstraction for rational points, and again, we can do the same thing here. Okay. So many of the things uh, of the ideas, the principle that we saw in the rational points uh, world, they translate into this zero cycle world. And just for the curious uh, people among you, um, this is how you define the, um, the brauer manin set for zero cycles. So uh, I will not explain here what's going on, but um, in this definition, the blue bits are what you would have in the rational, um, in the rational points world. And the, these extra orange bits are kind of due to the these complications that I was talking about whenever you work with zero cycles. But it's, uh, again, it's nothing too, di too difficult. Anyway, so now that we have this uh, refined as the principle uh, using the brauer manning set for zero cycles, we can ask a similar question as before. We can ask, okay, is the uh, is the is this as the principle is this refined as the principle enough for K3 surfaces or for Kummer varieties? Let's not forget about Kummer varieties. And uh, okay, in, in the case for K3 surfaces, uh, we had this conjecture by Skorobogatov. In the case, well, as we will see in a second, in the case uh, for general nice surfaces, so including also K3 surfaces and Kummer surfaces and Kummer varieties, we have this uh, very important conjecture by Colliotelan. So this conjecture uh, is the following, you can read it here. So 
uh, if x is any smooth projective geometrical integral variety over uh, k. And so in particular, it doesn't have to be a k3 surface. It doesn't have to be a Kummer variety. This conjecture should work for any such nice variety over k. Then the conclusion of this conjecture is that um, X satisfies the Asse principle with Brauermann in abstraction for the set of zero cycles of degree one. The conjecture, I believe, is just made for degree one. And this just means that um, uh, this, uh, this equivalence holds. Uh, so whenever you have that, the, this is the set of, uh, zero of zero cycles of degree one on X, and whenever this is empty, then uh, this uh, brouwer manning set for zero cycles of degree one on X is also empty. Okay, so this is the main conjecture. And again, this is an extremely hard conjecture. How much evidence we have, do we have? Unfortunately, not very much yet. Okay, that's uh, the main problem. We don't have much con uh, evidence towards the, this conjecture. So here I've just mentioned some of uh, the results we know. So we know this conjecture is true for curves um, uh, such that the the Sha the the Tate Shafarevich group of their Jacobian is finite. Uh, we know that this conjecture is true for conic bundles uh, bundle surfaces over P1. Uh, we know that um, this conjecture is true for smooth compact uh, ah, smooth compactifications of homogeneous spaces of connected linear algebraic groups with connected geometric stabilizer, stabilizers. And this was proven by Yang. The reason why this is blue and the other ones are black is because uh, we're going to be interested in the strategy of this result in order to say something about K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties in, in the case for zero cycles. Uh, it's not, I mean, the other results are also quite important, but we're going to focus on this one just because the strategy is, um, we can exploit a similar strategy. And uh, finally, we also, well, we also have these results by Harpas and Wittenberg. Okay, so there is some evidence, but of course, uh, the conjecture is so general that it's really difficult to give enough evidence towards that conjecture. Um, So let's move on to the main idea, which is also the idea behind uh, this, uh, this, uh, this result by Liang. So the main idea um, by Liang was that of trying to relate somehow the arithmetic of zero cycles to the arithmetic of rational points. And the main, uh, the main point here is that we usually know much more about the arithmetic of rational points just because we have studied it so much more classically than we do about the arithmetic of zero cycles. So if we can kind of relate this thing to uh, the arithmetic of zero cycles, we might say something meaningful about zero cycles. And that's the main idea. So here, uh, here it is. The main idea. So um, yeah, the the general let's say question behind Liang's strategy was the following. So suppose we know that um, the Brouwer money um, the Asse principle with Brouwer money obstruction uh, is true. Uh, first of all, let let's fix um, x. So x is some fixed uh, variety over k, over little k. Um, and the question is, if we know that the brouwer um the Asse principle with brouwer in obstruction is the only one for, um, for x, for all, or at least for enough finite extensions uh, of this form, can we conclude that the same is true for zero cycles? Can we conclude that the Hasse principle with brouwer in obstruction is the only one for zero cycles? And to make things easy, let's put up degree one. Okay. 
So can we create a bridge if, if we have enough knowledge about the the, uh, the rational points uh, world? Can we create a bridge to translate that knowledge to the zero cycle world? This this is the question. And the nice thing is that Liang in his paper that put the result that I mentioned before uh, showed that in some cases we can indeed transfer this knowledge. Okay, so this is great. And let me just give you a, a rough sketch of Liang's strategy. I mean, this is quite um, this is quite long, but um, I'll go quickly. But uh, essentially, the first uh, the first step is to um, reduce everything to the trivial vibration. This is quite kind of surprising, uh, but it works. I mean, the, the trivial vibration is really the key to this proof, in a sense, which is mind-boggling, if you think about it. Um, and then, essentially, um, you want to start uh, this kind of transfer, uh, transfer of knowledge process. And to do that, you really want um, this quotient of the Brouwer group of x, uh, quotient by, uh, quotiented by the constant Brouwer group, to be finite. This is a key thing you want. Um, the idea then is that you fix a close point on X and this will have some degree. Uh, and you fix some, some adelic point in this Brouwer Manning set. Then you do some manipulations and you end up with some new adelic zero cycle, um, which is still compatible with the Brouwer Manning obstruction and with the property that uh, the degree the, um, for each place v, the degree of this zero cycle is some delta, and this delta satisfies this nice congruence or coprimality condition with the degree of the fixed point and the, Brouwer, and the size of this uh, quotient of the Brouwer groups. Then the next step is to essentially cleverly using the trivial vibration um, I mean, this is a delicate step. I've skipped, I, I haven't put a lot of details, but the idea is we exploit the trivial vibration and uh, we can, uh, um, uh, by using essentially weak approximation, we can find uh, a field extension of degree uh, delta, the same delta as before. So the same delta satisfying this kind of nice. Uh, um, Coprimality conditions. Um, and we can find not only this uh, finite extension K, but also an adelic point in this set here. So this is the set of big K adelic points. Um, but here, notice that we don't have the bar group of X base ex um, extended over big K, but we still have uh, the bar group of X over our original field little k. Okay. So this is a problem. Uh, we really would like to have a K here because remember we want to use, the idea is we want to use um, uh, the assumption that we have uh, that the Brouwer man in uh, Obstruction is the only one for rational points over a uh, field K, but in order to do that, we, need, we, we really need this Brouwer group here and not the Brouwer group that we have there. So here we have the Brouwer group of the original X and not of, of X base change to big K. That's a problem. So, um, the first step is to try to kind of uh, deal with this problem and show that uh, somehow for such an extension, we have that the natural restriction map, this natural map, map here is surjective. I mean, in most cases, we can actually show it's an isomorphism, but surjectivity is enough. And once you have that this map is surjective, or even better, it's an isomorphism, you actually know that that adelic point that you've uh, found 
is in this set here with now a big K here. Okay. So step five is to use now the assumption that the Brauermann obstruction uh, to the Hasse principle is the only one for rational point over any number field, or actually you just need over enough number fields. And uh, if you use this, you can deduce the existence of a k-rational point, bk rational point x. And remember that k, bk over little k as degree delta, and we had some coprimality condition uh, for delta given by this. In particular, there was some coprimality condition with the degree of that point that we fixed at the beginning, that close point that we fixed at the beginning. So now we have a, a close point of degree delta and a close point of degree something else. And we know that the degrees of these two points uh, this x and this x tilde, they, they satisfy some coprimality condition. So essentially by taking a, a clever combination of these points, we can create a zero cycle of degree one. And so this shows actually that uh, whenever you have this kind of three main things, so let me just uh, revise them. So whenever you have that this bar group is finite, whenever you have that the, this restriction map is surjective for enough um, field extensions, and whenever you have that actually the Brauermannian obstruction is the only one for the ASCII principle for enough field extensions, then you can actually conclude that you can transfer the knowledge from um, the rational points world to the zero cycle world. And that's the way he proves his result. Now, the question is, can we, um, can we exploit this strategy? Can we adapt it to K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties in general? So here in this column, you will see the three conditions that I've just um, uh, highlighted, the three things that we really need to, to make Liang's strategy work. OK. So the first thing is, uh, do we have that the, this quotient of uh, the Brouwer group uh, is finite. And for K3 surfaces, uh, we know this is true, and this was a result by Skorobogatov and Zarin. And for Kummer varieties in general, this is also true, and again, this is a, a result by Skorobogatov and Zari, Zarin. They prove a lot of wonderful results on, uh, on these subjects, so you will see their names a lot. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, Hardle is, uh, we overcame the first uh, obstacle. Okay, so the second obstacle was, uh, can we prove that the restriction map is surjective or even better an isomorphism? So in the case of K3 surfaces, there is a result by Hieronymo, um, and this result was based on a result, a previous result by Orr and Skorobogatov, uh, which says that yes, that's also not a problem. We do have a uh, surjectivity of this uh, restriction map. And for Kummer varieties, there is a result by myself and Rachel Newton. And our result was based on, uh, on again, <laughs> the results by Skorbogatov and Zarin and by a nice result by Kreutz and Virai. There is an asterisk here, and I will talk about this asterisk in a second. But for now, this is. Uh, Let's say it's a tick. So we also have this. Clearly, the, 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 the most difficult point is the third one. Because for all this to work, we need to, to start with some solid knowledge about the rational point world and then transfer it to the zero cycle world. The problem is that at the moment, we just have conjectural knowledge in the rational points world. And so we just conjecturally transfer this knowledge. Uh, again, as I said before, for K3 surfaces, um, uh, Skorobogatov's uh, conjecture that the Brauermannian obstruction is the only one for, uh, for K3 surfaces, uh, for, uh, for rational points. And for Kummer varieties, uh, this is probably true as well. 
I mean, at least personally, I believe this is true. Again, uh, using that really strong connection between uh, Kumar varieties and abelian varieties. Okay, so unfortunately, the third step is still uh, a mystery, but I mean, it's not, uh, there is some hope for this to be true. Anyway, so let's move on to some results. How much time do I have? Five minutes, okay. Um, results for K3 surfaces. As I mentioned, um, Geronimo proved this nice result, so I'll just, I just thought I'd spell it out for you. And the nice result is that uh, conditionally on Skorobogatov's conjecture, uh, if X is a K3 surface, so he proved it for any K3 surface, then uh, um, uh, this uh, Hasse principle with Brauermannian obstruction holds. And the nice thing is that he could prove it for any D, not just for one, D equals to one, but for any D. So this is kind of nice. And as I said, um, his results crucially uses the following result by Arendt Skorobogatov. And this nice result uh, is essentially a, a way to bound um, the geometric, uh, the the invariant, the Galois invariant part of the geometric Brouwer group, um, in this way. So he uses that in a crucial way. So this is uh, the current uh, state of the art knowledge about zero, the arithmetic of zero cycles um, for K3 surfaces. What concerns the Asse principle and its variations. For Kummer surfaces and Kummer varieties, the problem is that, um, I mean, I mentioned before an asterisk uh, in my result with Rachel. And uh, for example, we don't know in general that uh, the restriction map is surjective for the this old bra group or for this old quotient. We don't know this yet. But luckily, we don't need this to in order to make a young strategy to work, because uh, we have this nice result by Kroz and Birai, which I mentioned before. And essentially, um, their result just tell us that we can, uh, if we can, if we restrict our attention to the two primary part of uh, this quotient or of the Brouwer group, that's enough. Okay, because this is their nice uh, result, which holds for any Kumar variety. Also, any twist, uh, twisted Kummer variety. Remember, here we're always talking about twisted Kummer varieties. Um, so that's great. So essentially, all we have to do is to try to prove that uh, the when we restrict to the two primary part of uh, the 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 restriction map is surjective. And this was the main uh, result that uh, Rachel and I proved and we use the, the close relationship between Kummer varieties and Abelian varieties. And this was where there were a lot of results due to Skorobogatov and Zarin. And this is the main theorem about the, the surgic, well, the, uh, the restriction map. Uh, I mean, essentially it says that uh, there is some constant which depends only on the dimension uh, sorry, this is the dimension of your variety and on uh, uh, the whatever primary part you want to talk about. Um, and anyway, it says that uh, for any uh, finite field extension of the Greek prime to this, uh, to this number here, we have that the restriction map is, uh, is an isomorphism. Essentially, this is what this is saying. I mean, this is not precisely what this is saying because this is uh, the algebraic power group, but then uh, you, you can make things work. So essentially we have this, um, this nice, uh, restriction maps are nice. And uh, of course, uh, this is for any D and we will use it with D equals to two. So what we can prove then uh, by putting everything together is this result. And again, we could prove that uh, conditionally on uh, the result to be true over rational points, um, we can prove that the brauer money obstruction is the only one for zero cycles. Actually, the two primary part of the brauer money obstruction is the only one. 
for any odd d. There are some problems when d is equal to two, but you know, odd d's, uh, they also include d equals to one. Um, how much time do I have? Oh, do I have a couple more minutes just to finish off a bit? Then, then I'll... Sure, sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, okay, so the title, uh, as I said, uh, was about products of K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties. So now we have this kind of results about uh, K3 surfaces and Kummer varieties. And can we put these results together to get even more results? Um, one thing that I want to, to remark is that uh, if you have two, let's say two K3 surfaces and you take their products, well, this is no longer even a surface. So in particular, we will not be a K3 surface and similar things for Kummer varieties. So whenever you have two Kummer varieties and you take the product, you might get something which is outside Kummer varieties. So it's, it's kind of interesting because you're, you're, you're saying things about even more general varieties. Um, and essentially, you can, uh, you can modify Liang's strategy to take into account products as well. And there is a very simple observation uh, to do this. And this is the result you get. So here you transfer the knowledge. You need to know the knowledge about rational points for each uh, component of your product. Um, this, is, this is the product variety that you want to consider. And then you can conclude some knowledge for, um, for the, the product variety itself. And here I've put uh, degree equals one, but actually you have something more general. Okay, to finish off, um, I'll just mention one related question. Um, so everything I've said uh, today was about the Hasse principle. So problems of existence of rational points, problems of existence of um, zero cycles. Uh, but that's not the only kind of arithmetic questions that you can ask. You can ask also something more related to density questions and things like this. So, um, and many of the results I've mentioned are actually, and the conjectures I mentioned are way more general than, I mean, they, they cover more than just the ASSE principle. And, um, and actually everything I've, uh, I've talked about today, uh, it's kind of related to this, uh, big conjecture, which is called conjecture E. And this conjecture implies all uh, the conjecture, for example, the conjecture by Colliotelan. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very important conjecture. And it relates, um, well, it says that this sequence here is exact. Now, um, this is the Chow group of X which is just called, uh, defined to be the, the set of uh, zero cycles of degree. Uh, zero cycles, we don't specify the degree, quotiented by the rational equivalence. And, uh, and this is the profinite completion. And yeah, so this is the main conjecture that people try to prove. Um, this implies, of course, the conjecture by Colliotelan, as I said and implies a lot of other <laughs> conjectures as well. Um, at the moment, this conjecture is not proven for uh, either K3 surfaces nor Kummer varieties. It's proven for in some cases. For example, I think uh, it's still proven for um, curves uh, with Jacobian, with, uh, where the tate shavarevich group of the Jacobian is finite, and it's proven, I think, can't remember in, in some other cases. But for example, for K3 surfaces and Kuhlman varieties, we don't know this yet. Conjecture e, e is still open. And uh, it would be nice to try to prove this uh, conjecture uh, in those cases. I think it would be neat. And I don't think it should be completely out of reach at the moment, but anyway. Anyway, this is uh, all I wanted to say. Sorry for going uh, a bit over time and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.